I'm Gary, and I'm from Grover Beach. A couple things I'd like to cover. Everything that I have on my list has been mentioned, but I'd like to uh, suggest that before we rush into a government-owned uh, insurance plans or government-owned care, that we consider this. Social Security is going broke. That's been run by the government. Medicare is going broke. That's been run by the government. So we're left with another possibility that we're going to have another broke consistent. Um, so what's the answer? I'm not sure I know the answer. I'm not sure I know the answer, but I know what's being proposed is not the right answer. I know that. I know that the current system is broke because it's too expensive for a lot of people, but I'd rather have that than what we are faced with with the new bill. Um, I heard the Obama um, uh, has given to the unions. I've never had a, been a union member, and if I'm stepping on your toes, I apologize but he gave them $50 million just to advertise for this program. So he can get the program pushed through. There is no reason whatsoever that it has to be done by September 1st or even by the end of the year. Only reason is because it's a socialized system and they want to make sure we're all under that control. I don't know what happened to the AARP, but they're no longer supporting the senior citizen. So I suggest you not pull your membership out. Thank you. Nancy Pelosi pulled this paper. <laughs> Amy, that's right, that's the bill, and it's so thin because it's printed on both sides. That's what we're doing. <laughs> I think that's the my, name, my name is Chris Arend. I uh, was just off on the radio show with Dave Congleton together with Walter Heath over there, and we thought we'd come on down here and discuss it a little bit more. But we all know there are problems in our health care system. The pre-existing condition exclusion, that just shouldn't be. We also know that we've got problems covering people with low incomes, and, that, and we also know that insurance companies engage at times in activities which can only be termed abusive. When they go out and they cut your health care, your health insurance coverage, and make you go through health when you're already sick. But ladies and gentlemen, those are problems that can be dealt with within the, with the current players in the market. This thing here, this is not what we need. When you go into this thing, and you go into the economics of it, 50% of you who are currently covered by employers-sponsored uh, insurance, you're going to be getting, I guarantee you, as the economics work, within the next four or five years, you'll be getting a letter from your employer saying, it's been nice having you on our insurance system, but now we're moving to the public option. The public option. For those of you who are on Medicare, for those of you who are on Medicare, you look at how they want to finance the public option, even with the financing they've got planned by the end of 2019, it'll increase the deficit by over $1 trillion. I'm not talking about the spending. That's how much that system is going to put us further into the hole by another trillion dollars, according to the CBO. The Obama administration has been trying to say, oh, but you didn't take into account administrative savings. You didn't take into account the savings from uh, preventive care. And the CBO said, oh, yes, we did. We're not stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, one trillion dollars, take a trillion here, a trillion there, adds up to a lot of money. These issues that we have to deal with, if we were to sit down, work with the participants in the healthcare industry, work with the insurers, take away some of the barriers and keep the insurers from engaging truly in interstate commerce, 
We can solve these problems. We can tort reform, as I see there, as a, as a retired lawyer. We can save <laughs> roughly 5 to 10 percent of current health care costs with these things. But ladies and gentlemen, it can't be done by trying to cram this thing down where even our representatives <laughs> on the computer, but I like to check different things out. And this came up on my computer the other night, and it's written by a Dr. Hansen <laughs> from Vancouver. It, he said more than 6,000 surgeries cut because of shortfall that could reach 200 million. It hasn't been announced yet by health authorities, which is something that they don't always tell us. We have to guess at what they're telling us. They hold back a lot of information that is crucial to our making a good decision on what we want or what we don't want. It hasn't been approved or implemented yet. And nearly a quarter of operating rooms will close, including 24% of cases scheduled between <coughs> September to March and 10% are medically necessary elective procedures. Cuts on neurosurgery, ophthalmology, vascular surgery, and 11 other specialized areas. 112 full-time jobs include anesthetologists, positions will be cut, longer waits for MRIs, waiting times now reduced, and surgical times also reduced, but with this new plan coming in, it will be defeated. So where does that leave us? We don't have any options left. And as far as doctors are concerned, they are being told to cut down on our medical uh, checkups to save money. A lot of doctors are against this because they know that we need to check our illnesses or problems that we have. And they're leaving San Luis Obispo. I don't know how many of you realize how many doctors we are short of today because they don't agree with that plan. They, they're there to help us. And we have to do something about it.